Why has a woman been put subservient or secondary to men in a lot of aspects, e.g. the wife must obey her husband, in laws of inheritance and even in value of testimony? The world is moving towards equality, but Islam doesn't seem to support this idea. What would you respond I to I wouldn't that? generalize and say that Islam doesn't support this idea or that Islam has not sought to look at how laws are to be applied in relation to the time and the space and the context in which they're revealed. Let me explain. When brother is mentioning about these particular laws in relation to woman, when the religion of Islam comes towards the Arabs in that period, their treatment of the woman is barbaric. Mm. Some of them decide to bury their daughters alive. When they bury their daughters alive, it's because of three reasons. Either because they are scared their daughters may run away with someone from a different tribe. Or they think their daughters cannot help them in the battlefield. Or they think their daughters will not be good businesswomen. Mm. So some of them would come and bury their daughters alive. If you want, you can look in the Quran, Surah 16, verse 58 to 59. Or you look at the famous ayah of the Quran, The female baby will ask on the day of judgment, for what reason was I buried alive? Woman, these girls were being buried alive, number one. Number two, the brother saying, Islam is not respecting the woman in terms of inheritance. For the woman to inherit, firstly, in some countries took years much later than the religion of Islam. Mm. In Arabia, women had, forget inheriting, they were inherited. I'll give you an example. My dad is married to my mom. My mom dies, he marries a second woman, yes? When he dies, I inherit her. I inherit my stepmother. That used to happen in Arabia. So you'd have to marry her? No, you inherit her. She's, she's yours. She's yours. <laughs> Okay. The stepmother has no option. She becomes yours. Wow. What about mahram, na mahram, halal, haram? Well, mahram and na mahram, halal and haram, these are all Islamic laws. We're talking jahiliya. <laughs> yeah. So, when you're looking at this, you're finding that the woman, mahar, dowry. Today the dowry is given in those days. Father-in-law takes the dowry. Women who are married, if their husband decides, you know what, I don't like this relationship, I'm just going to walk away. My dear brother, Irtiza, I think his name was. Irtiza from Pakistan. When you're telling me about the laws that Islam instituted, first, look at the situation and the context of how these laws came. The first part of the answer is that Islam came to try and bring, Wallah, I have read people who have written articles proving that the greatest feminist in the history of the world was the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family. Now, because when they see the reforms that he instituted mm -hmm. in, a, in a society that barbarically treated women, I'm not going to say that those reforms were going to bring an ideal straight away. Mm -hmm. And I'm also going to throw the spanner in the works by saying that I think if the Prophet peace be upon him his family looked at us today he would ask us that I would have thought you people would have continued would in looking at the rights of what we had established and worked harder on establishing it more mm. but that's not to say that's not to say that Islam should be embarrassed by its record Muslim countries have had Presidents or prime ministers who are women. Mm. United States of America until today has not had a leader of the country who's a woman. Mm. Pakistan can turn around and say we have. Bangladesh can turn around and say we have. And most people view Pakistan and Bangladesh as third world countries. Tell you mm. what, woman got to the top. If the woman were so oppressed in early Islam, Aisha, the daughter of Abu Bakr, would not be able to lead an army of thousands of men to fight Ali ibn Abi Talib at the Battle of the Camel. Mm. If women were confined to houses and women were ordered that all you can be is servants 
all you do is cook and clean. How does Aisha have the ability? The wife of Muhammad, therefore she is seen as being one who represents some of the vision of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family. She struts on her camel, sitting there, relaxed, with thousands of men around her. And you say Islam is a religion that has not given rights. How many women are there that when a religion is 25, 30 years of age, are able to lead that much men and be revered and respected so highly that even if she does do that and raises an army, you can't say a single word about it. And then when you bring in me other issues like inheritance, look at the context. And the idea of the breadwinner at that time was the man. Mm. Therefore, the inheritance would be higher because the man is the one who's seen as the breadwinner. Mm -hmm. The man's the one seen who has to spend. The right of the woman is that she doesn't have to work a single day on her life. That wife, her husband has to spend completely on her. If you're telling me about witnessing, the verse on witnessing is a verse in reference, for example, to an issue of a financial dispute or transaction. One witness comes to help the other. This is not an easy issue. So it's not just simple for a person to say, everybody has moved on. No, everybody has not moved on. The United Kingdom and the United States, only in the 20th century, only in the 20th century were there movements to tell women, okay, maybe you can vote. Mm. And there are many women who lost their lives or who were mocked. And yet Islam many years back had women leading armies or women speaking out against oppression in their time. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to deny that the application of some of these laws is in the hands of sometimes a chauvinistic, patriarchal, male, arrogant society. Mm -hmm. I can't deny that. I can't deny it. Nor can I deny the fact that a jurist who leads a religion who's seen his wife or his daughters live in a certain way, I find it difficult to see how they can appreciate that others may also be spiritually high without living in the same prototype that they mm. live in or expect of. That's a debate in itself. That when a person provides you with laws in a particular religion, how much of their worldview has an effect on the law that they formulate? 0.01%? Mm. Even that's a lot. Of course. <laughs>